Hello and welcome back to the Toronto website developer.com. I am PD Worski, the Toronto website developer specializing in Drupal. In this ninth video tutorial of our 10 part video tutorial series on Drupal 7 module development, I want to continue where we left off with the completed form and take a step back to something we originally worked on, which was permissions. Uh, we had originally, when we touched on it with hook menu, just ignored the permissions. But now that we actually have an administration page, we need to make sure that not every user can get to that page and that only our site administrators or people with the appropriate permission should be able to access that and administer our flags. But before we do that, you'll notice I'm over at torontoasetdeveloper.com slash store. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series. Uh, I don't have this one up yet, but as soon as I've completed it, I'll get it set up. Uh, each sale goes towards helping me to continue to bring these video tutorials to you free and frequently. Uh, so I greatly appreciate all the support thus far that I've received. Additionally, if you perhaps can't afford the $20, but you'd like to help out, please give this video tutorial a thumbs up or leave a comment on YouTube. I greatly appreciate that feedback. It helps me to continue to make these video tutorials better. Um, but YouTube also uses that information to help uh, promote these video tutorials to other users who might be looking for similar concepts. Lastly, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so. I'd love to see that number grow, and it's something that I do track. Uh, so again, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Uh, it really helps me out. That said, why don't we head back over to our site, and you'll see this is where we left off with flag application. Uh, we went ahead, we created our table. You can now approve and deny. And as you do this, all the information is updated in the database so that when I hit submit, all of these are now approved. And if I only did one of them, I could go to deny and it would be denied, uh, whereas the other still remain approved. But like I said, uh, we can actually log out and we'd still be able to get to this page. See, anonymous user can get in here and we want to make sure that can't happen. So the way that we do that is taking a step back into our hook menu. Previously, when we were working on this, we looked at access callback and access arguments, and we just kind of ignored them. Uh, you'll see that I commented out access argument. Uh, and for access callback, I just passed in a function name, which returned the value true. Uh, it implemented hook permission, but this wasn't actually the proper way to use hook permission. What we need to do is define a permission that will show up on the permission form that an administrator can uh, ensure that certain user roles have access to. So uh, in order to do that, let's head over to api.drupal.org. And you'll see here I've, I've searched for hook permission uh, and you can read about this hook but essentially what it does is we need to return uh, a, an array with each each key uh, would be a permission name and then uh, that is an array itself and we provide a title and a description uh, we won't look at restrict access or warnings uh, you can see what these are obviously we would need restrict access which is uh, something just to define something that could be a critical um, i guess security risk to your site uh, we won't have one of those with this module, but uh, you could easily implement that if you wanted to. So again, let's head back over to our code. And we've already gone ahead and implements hook permission. Let's remove this returns true and add in some code here. And I'll walk you through specifically what I'm adding. So easiest way to do this is we are going to return an array um, of permissions. That's according to the api.drupal.org. And each key has to be the permission we're going to define. So what I'm going to define is administer flag applications. And this itself is going to be an array with the title key. So this should be indented over. Uh, the title would be uh, administer flag applications. And you'll notice I'm wrapping this in the T function so that this string could be translated if anyone ever used this uh, module on a, on a site with another language. And then I'm also defining a description, which is a proven and deny flag applications. And that's all that I have to do for hook permission. So I can go ahead and I can save that. And then taking a step back into hook menu, uh, you'll see that we've got access callback and access arguments. So let's go back over to api.drupal.org and see what those actually do. So I've gone over to hook menu um, at api.drupal.org. It's just a quick search. You can use the search here. Uh, so I've gone ahead and I've done that. And you'll see that access callback is a function that's going to be called by hook menu. Uh, and it has to return either true or false to do, uh, determine whether or not the user has access rights to the menu item. Uh, so it's true, they have access, false if they don't. Um, and this will default to the function user access. Uh, and what user access does is it takes in a permission and it will check whether or not the specific user uh, that's being passed in, so whether or not the logged in user has access to, uh, you know, has that permission checked off for them. Uh, so that's what access callback does. We could also define our own function here if we wanted to do something a little bit dynamic. Uh, it, you know, it might be something that's dependent upon a number of different variables. I don't know. Uh, maybe if a person's already created a node on your site, they should have access to that. So we might need a custom function to do that. And that's where you can actually define one yourself. So uh, in 
in our example, sorry, in our example here, access callback, we're just going to uh, leave that out because it's going to default to user access. Uh, but if we didn't, that's where we would have flag application permission. We can define our own. And that's what we did uh, previously just to bypass this. And we return to true. So I'm going to get rid of this. We don't need it. And access arguments. So access arguments, uh, again, going back to api.drupal.org, what this is is um, it's essentially uh, arguments to pass to the access callback function. And so user access takes in um, the names of the permissions. This could obviously be something different. If we were doing something dynamic, you could pass in, I don't know, uh, the UID or, um, you know, maybe, a, I don't know, some other type of information that might be needed for a dynamic access call. But essentially when we're using user access, we have to pass in the permission that we're going to check against. So in our example here, it's not gonna be access content. We're gonna take this administer flag applications and we're going to pass it in there. We'll go ahead and save that. Now we have to go back to our site and because this is all part of hook menu, we've got to go ahead and flush our caches because all menus in Drupal are cached. And with that, we can now go over to our permissions page, do a quick search for flag application. And we're just getting our flags here. And you can see now we have our own flag application, administer flag applications, and then the, the description down here is approved deny flag applications. And so we want our administrators to be able to do that. So we can go down here and save the permission. That's great. Now, the one thing that's neat about uh, using hook permission, the user access, is when you click on user access and you take a look at the code, uh, it automatically checks uh, whether or not you're user one. Uh, and that's the super user. So you have access to everything. So it will automatically return true. So if we go back to our site, we can reload our or page, or rather we'll go to the structure flags, flag applications. And you can see we still have access to this, we're good. And if we go in as an anonymous user, you see here I'm in incognito mode, I'm logged out, I can reload this page, and you can see that I'm not authorized to access this page. Uh, I get an access denied page. So that's it, that's all that's there for hook permissions. Uh, I know this is a short video tutorial, and the next one what we're gonna do is finish things off. Uh, specifically, once we actually approve an application, that node should be locked. Nobody should be able to flag it because because uh, we're done. So we're going to finish that off in the next video tutorial. But again, if this video tutorial has helped you, please leave me a comment. Let me know. I always appreciate that. Please give the video tutorial a thumbs up uh, if it did help you. And hopefully we'll see you for the next and final video tutorial in the series. Thanks very much for watching.